it's such a blessing to get to be together with each one of you today to worship and celebrate the goodness of God. We love you. We are honored that you've chosen to fellowship with us today. We bless you online. Go ahead and share with a friend. Just click that arrow and let them know we're live and that they can join us this morning in our time of worship, our time of prayer, our time of exalting the Lord Jesus. So if you're here in the house, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand. If you're in your homes, I'm going to welcome you to stand as well. And we're going to pray. We're going to give honor to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We glorify you. We honor you with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise for you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah.
takes over and it settles in our souls and we believe that all is done and that the battle can't be won then we've forgotten christ paid for all we'd sold you said if my people you said who will call by my name you said will get humble and pray and seek my face and change their ways you would hear from heaven you would forgive our sins you would yes you said you would
let the Lord expose our hearts and lay our lives down, bow our knees, lift our hands. Cause there's no denying there's a lion who's jealous for a bride that's shining, who shows him love by interceding for the land. You said, if my people, you said, who will call by my name, you said, Will get humble and pray and seek my face and change their ways. You would hear from heaven and you would forgive our sin. Yes, you said you would. He
a cop on my name You said Who could humble and pray And stick my face and change their way You were Me from heaven You were Forgive our sins You were Yes, you said you were You said You said If my people You said Who will call by my name You said Who could humble and pray And seek my face and change their ways You were Here from heaven You were Forgive our sins You were Yes, you said you were In our life In our life God Heal our Lord, we declare you are healing our land. You are healing our land. You are healing our land, Jesus. Our land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing our land. Healing our land. Healing our land, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are healing our land. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. We receive Yes, yes, no. Well, take a moment and go welcome someone in the house, and we want to welcome you online. Just let's take a moment and share the love of Jesus. Good to have you all together here online. We are in the house and online in purpose to be in the presence, in His kindness, His mercy, His grace, and it is so pregnant. The atmosphere is pregnant with grace, new grace coming to touch the earth and touch his people appearing to all men. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We just say to you that help is coming from the sanctuary. Help is coming from the sanctuary. Jesus is here. He's here to help you. Yes. He loves you so much. It's like my heart was overflowing with a godly theme, not just for yeah. him, but for his body. Oh, back yeah. to his body. Yeah, back to oh, his body. We love you. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. Welcome. 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 Welcome, everyone. Welcome. It's so good. Doesn't it feel good to be in the house of God? Amen. 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 Doesn't it feel good to be the house of God? That's what we are, the house of God, the mobile house, the on-site house, the online house. We're all the house of God and living temples. We, yeah, welcome. Welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team, so much. Yeah. I mean, just every week after week, they've just so powerfully carried us into the presence of the Lord. You know, and I want to thank Larry and Melanie because I know they've kind of ended up doing all our praying for us, yeah. even though yeah. we go and we're still continuing with you online, but you're not alone, and I really believe God's yes. got a great reward for your faithfulness. Yeah. Yeah. And body, let me encourage you, let's don't make them do all the work. Yeah. Amen. Everybody keep picking up the part we're supposed to carry. Use our faith and to make declarations. That's really the key in living our faith, is just to declare the decree the Lord says to you. Yeah. Each of us hear the Lord speak, we need to speak it back. We declare it out loud, and God hears, and he legislates from that point of our earthly agreement. Amen. We've kind of been going through a, an interesting thing because for several months, Steve keeps coming back to me saying, the, the most important thing I feel, the place where I really feel like I'm connecting is if I just pray. Maybe I'm just supposed to just, just spend my time praying, which he spends quite a bit of his time praying. But I really believe mm. that the closer we get to the Lord's heart, mm. 
the more we're going to understand how to use the keys that he's given us. Yes. Because yes. when we can declare yes. the decree that he is saying, I just saw this morning, it's going yeah. to be simple. It's just like turning a little thing. It's not like having a big gigantic key that you don't really know how to work. And I think for many years in the body, we've tried really hard to work these keys, but we haven't really understood exactly how to work them. And I just saw, it's, gonna, it's like nothing. It's like a supernatural thing. Locks will just open for you without even doing anything. Yeah. Amen. How about that? Yeah. I'll take that. That's what it is. Time, the time of his reigning couple of things before we do or receive our offering. Marilyn, would you like to say something about the home group that starts on Monday? Yeah, come on up. And Brian, would you like to share something about Lake Charles and the team you're pulling together to leave on the 26th? And then we'll, you can use, we'll just, it's just, 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 just every, I know, awkward, just, afterwards, you know, just put hand sanitizer on it. I'm yeah. fine, okay. <laughs> Plead the blood. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, right. Amen. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tomorrow night, as uh, the first night, Bernadette and I are going to be having a home group meeting. It's going to be at mine and Kip's home. It's going to be every other Monday. It starts at 7. And so if you're, you know, feel like you have old dreams or things that, goals that you need to set, you want to move forward and not be where you are this time next year. Uh, and build your faith, then come and join us. Uh, the theme is build your faith, uh, dream big. So everyone's That's invited, good. men and That's women, good. all ages. It doesn't matter because we all need to, you know, set goals and move forward. So anyway, we hope to see you. If you have any questions, give us a call. My phone number is 805-551-3382. And I think it's on the calendar at the church, so yeah. <laughs> you can get all And by the door, there's a flyer oh, great. to okay, great. grab it. Thank you. Go ahead. Good morning, Jubilee. Good morning. So I, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on Lake Charles, and uh, we are gathering a team. We will leave a week from tomorrow, which is the 26th, and we will stay till the 5th of November, or again, we'll adjust your time. I just wanted to give any, everybody an, in, a personal invitation that, that we can use more help. Right now I have myself and one other person that's tentative. Yeah. They're checking with their boss and see if they can get time off. And that, so if, if, you'd like to, if you'd like to take a good what are you, opportunity. What are you going to do? That's, uh, <laughs> that's a good idea. I mean, a team, go with me. A team to go. Yeah, Disneyland, I mean, yeah, what are we looking at? Charles, it's, it's, a, it's a Disneyland, all right. It's the, it's the happiest place. Um, no, we're going to go and we're going to work on Shane and Hannah's house that, was, that was, uh, had a lot of damage due to Hurricane Laura. So we'll be doing things like drywall, putting on a roof, um, electrical, changing that, redoing all their floors, uh, gutting the bathrooms and redoing the bathrooms. And that, so just a lot of really fun hands-on things. So you might be saying, I, I don't really have all those skills. You know what? Or you might be just the opposite, saying I do have those skills. Yeah. Roofing. We're going to put roofing. a whole brand new roof on it. We have to put it. a whole new roof on Electrical. Electrical. Drywall. Roof torque. Pulled off by the hurricane, yeah. pulled the wires with tore, it. Tore out everything. The drywall has to be taken off taken and put down, back. Taken down, bleached, and uh, redried, and then the same with the floor. Jane's so, a part of a ministry called Friendships. They've yes. been a nonstop. You had two hurricanes go through Lake Charles, but two hurricanes, they haven't touched their house. And right. it's, we wanted to send a team and finances yeah. to do their house. Yes. So that when Veda shows up, which they had already scheduled. We're already scheduled. When's she for, coming? For the 5th. Okay. When so I, that's why you I, want everybody to leave after that. No, they're welcome to stay. <laughs> well, I would have yeah. them leave. Just well, yeah. come and do the work and make a if, key if turn. If we're done, we're great. If okay. they're, if you, if you, again, we're willing to, to adjust time to, to make it work. I, I believe that with, I know the scripture says that many hands makes light the work. And at this point, I'm believing for many hands. So whether you have a lot of skill or whether you have limited skill and, and you want to go, you feel the tug of God to, to go and to give, to give your life away, to give your time, to give that, um, that talent and that we'd love to have you. You can see me after service or you can text, you can email me or, or that. And that's Brian Rogers at Jubilee Church. Yeah. But again, if you're in the house, call me. You can connect with me. If not, 
Send me an email. Put it Call in the, the church chat. Office. Put it in the chat today. I'll put it right in the I, chat. I said I would on Wednesday. Totally forgot. Things happen. Yeah. Um, and cool. The other thing is you can give into this offering. This, we're going to take our offering. If you put Lake Charles or you put Shane Rogers, all this portion of giving this season will be to renewing their house. We believe God wants to raise a house. Not just his house, but all our houses. But sometimes you focus on one. And then God breaks it open yes, for everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. So what would you say about, I, I, we're going to give. Thank you everyone for your faithful giving. It's because we give to the Lord Jesus that we did not stop giving in the midst of a pandemic or whether we were in the parking lot or online or in the house. It's about the Lord. He receives our gift. In fact, he expects it. He told us never show up empty handed doesn't mean that every service but in those feasts that was a big deal thank you for tithing thank you you can get envelopes should be on your chairs there'll be buckets along the side and along the front online you can give with uh, using our tithely app it's on our website or once you have it once you sign up you can download it the app on your phone or mobile and you can use it anytime you can text your giving it's just a part of it so we want to release a blessing and then we'll worship. Father, in Jesus' name, our heart is overflowing with a good thing. We recite the composition, our composition concerning the King. Our tongue is the pen of a ready writer. You are more great, more fairer than all the sons of men. Grace is upon your lips. Therefore, the Lord has blessed you forever. We now declare in the name of Jesus the supernatural. We speak to Shane and Hannah Rogers home that by the grace of God there will be a unlocking of finance and, and personnel and help and a house will be raised in Jesus' name. We declare it will break open and all the households of Jubilee will break forth. Even doors will open for people to purchase homes, to move into new homes, to step up into a greater grace, to downsize and get free from a big home. Hallelujah! Freedom! Yes. Jesus yes. is moving to set the people free, to manifest yes. and increase and glorify himself in this house. We come out of the crises in health and in wealth. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and worship and give. situation I face, there's an answer. You're the answer. You always answer. Even when I cannot see it. You're never absent. You never leave, Lord. I believe. You always answer. Just the way you plan. Every situation I face, there's an answer. You're the answer. As the storm begins to rage, so far from the shore that I can't see. I've only got two hands. Will I make it back to land? I'm coming to the end of me. But you always answer, even when I cannot see it. You're never absent. You never leave, Lord. I Situation I face, there's an answer. You're the answer. You always answer. Even when I cannot see it, you're never absent. You never leave, Lord. I believe you always answer. Just the way you plan. Every situation I face, there's an answer. You're the answer. All I see is what stands in my way. But then you take my hand and 
you offer me your peace and I know it's gonna be okay cause you always answer even when I cannot see it you're never absent you never leave Lord I believe you always answer just the way you plan in when the way shall I face there's an answer you're the answer God is so moving ever since the Feast of Tabernacles. At least he's just moving in me in a really wonderful, overwhelming way. And I know he's moving in our house. We can feel that. We are, by Wednesday, we're going to fly out to D.C. to visit our daughter and family. They just moved back from, in, from Japan in June. And we'd set the calendar about three months ago to go there. She thought we ought to be there when they do the turning of the leaves. So we kind of set that time, and which is really cool. At the same time, last July, we were there for my first time really walking through the Capitol and praying. And uh, Cammie ran into a marble pillar inside the Supreme Court, almost broke her leg because those things don't move. We were really prayed through the Capitol. We were there during the uh, Deborah Company, and I spent a lot of time in intercession walking the land. Went around the Supreme Court at least three times, the outside of the building, shouting, declaring grace. And so now we are going to arrive on Wednesday, and we will be there during the confirmation of, uh, you know, uh, Amy Connie Barrett. And that... And we'll get back on Tuesday. We're, uh, Brian's going to do a testimony of Jesus Wednesdays, which is what I like calling the midweek conversation. It's the, hearing the testimony of Jesus in our body. And he's going to be sharing with Becky on Wednesday about this whole new call of prayer that's coming alive. And then we're going to do a generation service like we had out in the parking lot back in the house. And that'll be uh, Brian and uh, Wes uh, Munyon will be in here, so that's exciting. The children's ministry, which I think everybody already told everyone, is in the family room. We're on, our, we're on set. We're in, we're in progress to take all of the classrooms and, clean, and redo them all, put new flooring in, new paint, and set them up. So it's just an exciting transitional time. And once something like this starts to break loose, and a lot does, I've got to share a, a dream I have. But first, I want Dana Clark uh, to come on up, would you, Dana? Because he had a, a profound encounter on Wednesday, I believe it was, and he texted it to me, and I said, could you bring it back, bring it forward, because I think it's impactful for our response right now. 
there's something that God's doing to unlock the world for himself. So, Good morning. I was... Uh, I was praying a few days ago. Um, I don't know if anyone else is having a significant thing happen in their lives, but I am. Um, This first uh, seven or eight months of all this stuff that's going on, uh, it was like a big roadblock for me. I've talked about that. Um, And it just stopped. And so whatever's going on, if you're feeling that, I just want to uh, speak a word of encouragement to you because at some point it stops and the Lord takes all that stuff that's been piling up behind it and he pours it out on you. And he will. That goes with if it's been three months or 50 years because nothing's lost in the kingdom ever. So he, um, I've been praying to know the heart of God or to know his heart just about things and that's a, uh, uh, it's the most important thing, I think. And what precipitated it was all the angst in the world and all the offense that I see everywhere. I I practice in West L.A. Um, I know it's everywhere, but it's, the spirit of offense is palpable. It is. And the Lord took me away from a place of looking at the world and looking at how it's affecting his children and the church. Because it's affecting us, I believe, or it is affecting me way more than we admit, way more than we acknowledge. And I just asked him about it. And that was like four days ago. And um, he told me something as clear as I've ever heard him say anything to me. And it crushed me, to be honest with you. It, um, it's one thing to know the heart of God. And then if you keep going, I believe he'll let you feel it. And we've all probably been to those places. And I don't believe if, if you don't come away from it damaged in a good way, then it probably wasn't his, because I don't think he can, I don't think you can grow without the pain that comes from knowing what your deficiency are apart from him. And it had everything to do with how we, me, as a believer and as him, see everything around us that isn't in him about the people, about the institutions, about our attachment to needing the world to look a certain way with us believing that we need it to look a certain way because we want Christ to come and we want his kingdom, when in fact we want it to look a certain way so that we can meet the desires of our heart and not the desires of his. Because we either seek the desires of his heart or we seek our heart's desire. And they aren't the same thing. And we can think we're seeking his heart, but we're really just seeking to to placate our own because we need things around us to look a certain way so that we can go on not having to experience what is really on his heart. That's what he showed me. And that's why it was, uh, that's why it moved me the way it did. Uh, So what he told me, um, and it wasn't, there was no judgment when I felt this. It was just grief. It really was. It, It wasn't meant, It wasn't been in judgment. And the Lord said, it grieves me immensely that you who are forgiven all and given all stand in judgment of my children whom I love and desire for myself. (laughs) 
uh, they are lost in the wilderness of this world. And I have called you the bearers of the knowledge of the way home through my grace to participate in showing them the way to relationship with me through your prayer, through your words, and through your actions here and now. You see the lost sheep who is being sought, yet you do not shelter it while its owner passionately seeks for it to be returned to him. You do not give it food. You do not show it compassion. You simply judge it for being lost. So, it, it, uh, that undid me. <laughs> and it undid me because I realized that when I look at others and I desire, when I look at others that are not his children, that the desires of his heart are nothing more than for them to be his children. He doesn't care what their politics are. He doesn't care how they're living their lives. You do not take a drowning person and criticize them for drowning. You don't lecture them for swimming in water when they don't know how to swim. We don't criticize them for their decisions. We simply desire that they be found. And that's it. The Lord desires the lost to simply be found. And then everything else that comes along, that's what he does to us when we are his children. That's where he grows us and moves us forward. But whatever happens in two weeks or in 30 years, none of it slows down the coming of the kingdom of heaven and what God is going to do. And if we as believers really want to seek his face and really want our, our, our land healed, our land, is, will be, our, our land is not sick because of the hearts of the lost. It's sick because of the, 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 the hearts of the believers. And I would just encourage everyone to really be honest and open our, our heart to his and what he is calling us to be and the way he is calling us to see the people around us. Because when we stand in judgment of them because of their opinions or their lives or their circumstances, we have a choice to either speak in to their death or to speak into their resurrection. And I just want to encourage us to speak into their resurrection because that's what's in his heart. That's what's in his heart. And so, Lord, I just uh, I, I lift up uh, what you said to me. And I thank you, Lord, that if we open ourselves to your heart, that you will show it to us. And I pray, Lord, that you soften our hearts and that we see the world not through eyes that need to see it a certain way, but through your eyes. through your purposes in all things. And we pray for those that are lost to be found. And we pray that we will be useful in, in your expanding kingdom and finding them and bringing them to you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Dina. I just want to open up in uh, prayer as I get to share this vision, dream, and then we'll flow from there. Father, in Jesus' name, would you be kind and just unlock what you are doing fully in us. You are coming to save, heal, and deliver for you our salvation, healing, and deliverance. And we, your bride, are opening our heart to receive you 
as we've humbled ourselves and continue to humble ourselves, as we pray and continue to pray, as we seek your face and continue to seek your face, and as we turn from our wicked ways, those self-absorbed obsessions and opinions and things that have done us no good, they've spoiled our life, they're idolatrous in ways that we wouldn't see a month ago, but now we see things that you are and have promised and are doing, hearing us. You are forgiving and healing. And therefore, we anticipate and expect to be changed, to be radically impacted here on the planet. We, the doors of yours into the earth, the ones that you would use to touch lives, heal lives, forgive lives, deliver lives. We anticipate this movement of heaven through us for the glory of God. We heard you say two weeks ago, you said to me anyway, that every promise in the Bible is mine. Jesus speaking, they're not yours, they're mine. And then you proved it in Scripture. I won't take the time. But you simply said, every promise is yes in me and every promise is amen in me. And it's for the glory of my Father to be accomplished through you. But it's not for you. It's for me. And so I began to radically be yielding over my own rights, privileges, desires, and thinking of promises as something that was guaranteed me an outcome a certain way. I started yielding and saying, no, it's for you, for you to have access so that you can touch the earth however you want, whether it makes me rich or whether it makes me poor. It isn't my issue. You'll take care of your beloved bride. But it is all for you. It's all for you. And for us to learn the nature of God, to become partakers of the divine nature of God and to escape the corruption that's in this world. You're shaking the world and everything that can be shaken so that we can receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And we need the grace now, Father, the grace to receive a kingdom so that we can have grace to serve you in an acceptable way with reverence and godly fear for you God are a consuming fire and you're coming to waken so I pray father for the grace to just testify the things you've shown me Jesus and for us to receive the things you're doing for us to give room for you to move in every one of our lives none of us want to be the same we aren't the same we welcome your coming we know you'll overwhelm us as you did Dana as you do any of us when you show up you we're on the ground and you're standing up that's how it always is we want it. We welcome it. We receive it. We give room for each other to have that happen. However, you want to deal with any one of us. We bless you for this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Saturday morning, yesterday morning, I'm waking up. I'm having lots of dreams. Lots of experiences with Jesus in dreams, which is, I guess, one thing it means I'm old. So, that's the, that's the humor part of it. I'm old talks to me a lot in dreams. Yesterday morning, I want to share an appearing. Yesterday morning, he appeared to me in a dream, and he said, this was Lord Jesus. He said uh, five simple words. He said, shout grace to President Trump. So when I was in the dream, I started shouting grace because it's an interactive encounter. I started shouting grace to President Trump. I started shouting grace. And I could feel the force of the kingdom moving toward Washington, D.C. I could feel the force of life and grace, which is the essence of the kingdom, it's grace, flooding into Washington, D.C., to Capitol Hill, to the, to, the, to the House of Representatives, to the Senate floor, to the Supreme Court that's above the Capitol Hill, and to the White House, and just flooding, and even to the electorate, and the people's hearts all over the uh, United States, and I could feel this shout. So, unto the Lord, I, that started yesterday. It was as clear as anything. Now, I want to, I'll take us in a moment. When we prayed into the kingdom, uh, uh, the Heal Our Land conference, it was simple. Take Second uh, Chronicles 6, 29, where Paul, uh, Solomon may pray to prayer. If any prayer or any petition, any supplication made by anyone or all the people of Israel, when each one knows his burden of his heart and his own grief, when he knows his own burden, his own grief, 
Nobody, God isn't interested in you telling anybody else's stuff. You're only interested in our stuff. And when we, if we, if they will then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive. And then lead them in your way. There is a way that's not our way. The way of God is not our way. Our way, until we submit to Jesus Christ in his way, we'll just do our way and fluff it up and call it holy. But his way is for himself to apprehend the earth back to himself, to have the full inheritance. So we went in that with a, bur- with a, with a humbling our heart. So if the Lord was heard our prayer, and if the Lord has indeed uh, forgiven our land, and if the Lord is healing, if he's forgiven our sin, healing our land, what's that going to look like? What's that going to look like? And when I, once I understood what I had encountered, and it's so strong, I can feel when I shout grace, it just carrying salvation. Because Ephesians 2.8 says, we are saved by grace through faith. And that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So the healing of our land will be salvation extended by grace through faith. It will be the message of Jesus Christ being received and heard. It will be, it will be the taking off of the conflict. Uh, what Dana shared is so true and during our Heal Our Land when uh, John Dawson shared about uh, the, uh, the, not Psalm 140, we closed that service with that, let not the slanderers stand in the land. And we, all of a sudden, this sound of grace. The context, and I know this so well because this has now been a part of my life. I come in and out of this. Often, whenever there's a pivotal shift for my own life and my own assignment, it becomes, I return to this, Zechariah 3, Zechariah 4. So we'll go there. And then I'll see what else we do. <clears throat> I was telling Cammie about five weeks ago, I said, I said, I don't know if I'm more effective. I think I'm more effective with God than I am with people. I have, heaven responds, I respond, we work well together. I've gotten used to the sound of his voice and, and I'm and flowing with him. But, and so many things have occurred that now I'm waiting on the Lord just to try to understand because I also see Wow, I can't say any of the things I see. That's what God told me. Wait till after the election. I'll tell you what I saw. But what I can share you today is this charge that God said. And in Zechariah chapter 3, if you just put up number 1. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, Lord, rebuke you, Satan. Lord, who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. You... Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? So, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. And then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him. This is the Lord speaking. Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, Zechariah speaking, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him and the angel of the Lord stood by. For 14 years, Zechariah, Joshua, the high priest, was faithful to offer the offerings that were on the new moon, on the morning offerings, evening offerings, on the feast offering. And basically what would appear to us today is going to some state park some fire pit, nothing else around him. He had, they had laid a foundation, but it had long since gone into dis, disrepair because they had been stopped, had forcefully stopped by decree from the king of Persia that they were not to build the temple. They had gotten in a conflict, accusations rose, false accusations prevailed, and for 14 years they just kind of lived in whatever they were doing the best they could until Haggai and Zechariah start prophesying and they rise up and they start to build. Zechariah is now in the midst of this 
They've laid the foundation. And the same accusations or questions have risen, but the heart of the people are totally a different people. They're humble. They're not arrogant. They're not self-righteous. They're not think that they have a right to no one else. They're just trying to stay submitted to the word of the Lord. Not trying to... And, and so letters have gone now back to the king, to Darius, to have a judgment decided upon this temple. Can it be built? Did Cyrus really say so? And so while they're away... Zechariah is prophesying. And while that letter is waiting the answer, and they're trying to hold their place in God, he's prophesying. And first thing he speaks to is the priestly ministry. And he says, he gives a picture of Joshua. He is in a filthy garment. Satan is at his right hand to oppose him, to accuse him, to, to dismantle his position. While he stands in front of the angel of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ, in a... In, in a uh, before his pre-incarnate form. He is ministering to the Lord, trying to be faithful. But So the first thing he does is he dismisses hell. And that's an easy thing. Hell is an easy thing for God to dismiss whenever the, the situation hell is no longer needed to get the attention of the church back to Jesus. He just, go. I've chosen him. I rebuke you. Then he says to the, the angels that are about him, he says, take off these filthy garments. And we know the filthy garments we just read are his iniquities. Iniquities is the self-will of man. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him, Jesus Christ, the iniquity of us all. What is iniquity? My way. Not just Frank Sinatra. who's saying that. We do it my way. My choice, my feelings, my opinion, my, my wants, my rights. Those willfulness of man is the iniquity. It's the worst form, formation. Transgressions is the rebellion of man against the rule of God. And sin is the offenses of man, missing the mark, falling short. This man is serving God. He's standing, he's offering offerings, yet he is soiled. Now, what is the word of a filthy garment? The word filthy is to be soiled like from sweat. It doesn't, and everything else that comes out of your body. His exercising himself to hold a place that he was given while a situation was shut down, grace was not flowing, had left him soiled. And I know many of us, when we come before the Lord, we have two choices, ignore who we are, or, or allow God to take off what we are and put on us who Christ is. And it's these moments where he, all of a sudden there's a, take, a putting off of the pressure of hell. Now there's a revelation of a personal situation. Now there's an exchange. Take off the garments. Put them on. Give them a new head. Give them a new mindset. Give them a new diadem. So they do. So this undoing of iniquity which is so needed for everyone to constantly come back and have an encounter. That's what a prayer life is, is to get clean from what the day before, to get free from the night before, to get renewed in the, in the, in the spirit of mind, to, to come back into fellowship, sweet union. That's what marriage is all about. That's why you do date nights. Date nights sometimes work, otherwise you do fights. You're either converging or diverging. You're either getting closer or you're going just... So he's in this moment. He said, let them put this clean turban. And the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua saying, uh, thus says the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my watch, which is the word command, if, and then you also will judge my house. Likewise, I'll have charge of my courts and I'll give you places to walk among those who stand here. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, and you and your companions who sit before you, for you are a wondrous sign, for behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. The whole purpose of every renewal comes to the body of Jesus is so that the Lord Jesus can step in. He wants to step in. He wants to go around healing neighborhoods and and nations. He's here to do so. And when he comes, he's like, the, he's like the commander of the army. He's not for us. He's for himself to accomplish his will. And we can, he wants to go through us. But if he'll either go through us or over us once he comes up, 
once he's come in this moment of time. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon the stone are seven eyes, Holy Spirit. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord, and I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. Now that has already happened at the death and burial, resurrection, ascension of Jesus Christ. But in, in real time, experiential, United States of America, California, the earth, there are those moments when iniquity just is taken off of its pending, uh, building up force. It just, it comes through, it's going to come through forgiveness. It has to then come through the, the, the grace that is extended, that releases the healing, that brings the salvation, that brings the deliverance. It comes through an exchange. So, then, in that day, says the Lord, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. Could you imagine that humani- that love for one another, that we all of a sudden just say, hey, we're not in conflict with each other. Let's come, you, let's, you, all of a sudden, it, there's wholeness amongst the, huma- the hu- humanity. So, chapter seven, uh, 4, a verse about, s- verse 4, I think, he now speaks to the governor, Zerubbabel, chapter 4, Zechariah 4. Look around verse 4. I don't have it in front of me. I'll find it faster than you. Okay, no, I won't. No, uh, yeah, that'll be fine. Beautiful. You find it faster than me, see? I... Marta, you're back there. That's, I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have known. I shouldn't have. Okay, so <clears throat> Jesus is high priest and king. And in Zechariah chapter 7, we're taught, we are told later that he will be the one that will bring peace. We've spoken to the priest. Now we're speaking to the king, the governor. They are both operating in the purpose of God, which is to reestablish worship, which is to reestablish the, the land and the covenant. We are here in this building given permission by God to be back together, to see COVID-19 stay under our feet, to go from purple, which now we're in red, and from red we're going to yellow, and yellow to, yellow to clear. Because we're all taking our COVID-19 vaccination every day, right? Behold, I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and COVID-19 and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's not arrogance, it's just declaration. You see, what we're, uh, the house of prayer, I can't, what's coming is that we will be priests and kings with Jesus on reigning with declaring decrees that are being given to us in our intimacy and walk with God, walking out our particular position of of influence in the living body of Jesus. If we're liver, we will be claiming the blood. And if we are kidney, we will be we will be removing the extra fluids that are no longer required. If we're eyes, we'll be seeing. If we're ears, we'll be hearing. If we're hearts, all we will be feeling. We will come alive in the body of Jesus Christ. In one head, only one head. And we'll all do what the head says. So now we speak to the governor. Oh, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain. You shall, and he shall bring forth the cap, capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Let me say something to us, because you've got to hear this. This is important. God doesn't need any more than one person. Zechariah chapter 3 is a vision and a conversation to one man. Chapter 4 is a vision and a conversation to one man. Don't underestimate who you are. You are something if God talks to you. You're nothing if he doesn't. <laughs> Sorry. In fact, the whole point of abiding and dwelling is if we abide in Jesus, we're to abide in us. We can ask anything we want, and it's done because we're in union with the decree of the Lord. And we're, we have power and authority because we have the voice of the Lord, the word of the Lord. So he says, here it is. Great mountain. You're going to come a plain. He, Zerubbabel, shall bring the, the capstone with shouts of grace. Grace. You see, grace is the currency of the kingdom. Grace is the substance of the kingdom. Grace is the reason salvation is extended through faith. It's by grace we're saved. Through faith. 
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans uh, 15, 30, he says that the God will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The grace, without grace. And that's why we, if we go into judgments, criticism, backbiting, speaking evil, opinionated Christians, we basically shut down the grace of the Lord Jesus. Because you, you go into law. Once you're in law, grace is no longer functioning. For you or anyone else. Jesus Christ becomes of no effect. And we fall from grace. We frustrate grace. So it's really a, con a conscious like, why God says, separate yourself unto me daily so I can return you to me daily so that I can reconfigure you back to who I am and what I've done and not what you are and what you're doing. And would, you would follow me and give me access. So that's daily prayer. So he says to Zerubbabel, Zechariah, the vision, this, all the obstacles, Spirit of God's taking care of that. And the, and the completion, the establishing of the, of the worship that you're in the project, that's going to happen through grace. Meanwhile, back in Babylon, they're deciding, is this really so that Cyrus did this? Did, did Cyrus really say that he should? And, all, and they discovered it. So uh, the favor is growing. I can feel this favor that's coming. It's going to give salvation. The great T Titus 2.11 the grace of God has appeared to all men, bringing salvation. The grace of God has appeared to all men. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So if salvation starts happening, it's because the grace is appearing. If grace starts appearing, it's because God starts hearing. If he's hearing and he's real-time forgiving, real-time forgiving, the real issues of today, the language of the conflicts, the, the, function, the funkiness of life that's building internally, community, families, nations. Then all of a sudden, grace starts to break forth and starts to open up the salvation door. And door, people start walking in salvation. And we're in it. We're in it. It's just getting stronger. So moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of the temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know the, the Lord of hosts has sent me. Every one of us in this room, I'm, I'm looking at you, and everyone online, I'm seeing you. <laughs> you're here because you're not just, we, we don't do church well at all. We are the church. And church is only when we are living uprightly with God, otherwise we, we're a performance club. But you're, we're seekers. We're pilgrims. We're in pursuit of a city. We've been touched by God. Sometime we've been touched. You were in a prayer. You've had a Dana experience. Maybe it was years ago now, but you had one. And one, one or two or three, and it keeps you going. And now all of a sudden the Lord steps in and he says, it's time. Let's get up. You started something, let's finish it. You laid a foundation, let's build on it. Let's not, let's not, you know, just kind of, you know, we, there's no retiring in the kingdom. The only thing we can do is the older we get is get rid of more stuff. Make it easier to leave. Don't make your kids throw away your garbage. That's personal advice to me. You, you live, you're li we're lightening the load. We're, we're, we're so in our, it just, it just starts going. So he says, for who has despised the day of small things? Can you feel your heart starting to flutter? Can you start feeling the tears wanting to come back? You start to feel the, the, the separation that you've been living with, that you don't want to live there anymore? You start to desire to, to be with God, not to try to resolve a conflict, but to be brought into contact? Those are, those are the flickerings. Those are the beginnings. Those are the way God starts to pull us back in. And each of us can respond or each of us can ignore it. We can stand, we do as best we can, but these are the days we're in. Don't despise that. Don't despise, the, just don't. He's so, he's so coming. Uh, and, and it's not about a, a, a pattern. That's why he won't let me talk about any of the things he's saying. He just says, you could, he told me this one. I had to do this. 
shall grace. And I don't even care. If, uh, once, once you hear a decree, TV doesn't matter. News doesn't matter. You don't care what network you're watching because none of them matter. I'll be honest with you. When November 4th comes, I'm going to have the same day I had November 3rd. I want to be honest with you. The kingdom of God is not in a panic, concerned or worried. And I have enough faith that I am confident that God's choice will be exercised through the heart of the populace of, of, of the United States of America and the one who becomes president will be the choice of God. And notice I'm not telling you who I think that is. Because, because the body of Christ is supposed to be individually growing up into him who is the head. Each member connected. Each member connected. The king of glory the king of glory is coming into the earth. Not the president of the United States. The king of glory. And that's the door I am. I am for the king of glory. God might think persecution is a better door to bring preaching. He might think prosperity is a kind thing to do because he saw tender hearts repenting. He might think... Whatever it is, it's not the circumstance. That's why the shaking's taking place. The shaking takes place to dismantle our grasp of physical, emotional, mental mindsets that say, this is the way life is and this is what makes life. And he starts to say, well, if that's all that important, how are you doing without it? <laughs> and then we have to start going, yeah, how am I doing without it? Gosh, I have my whole life wrapped up in this stuff. I have all, I'm, I'm a nervous wreck, or I'm angry, or I'm yelling at the TV. Yelling at the TV is a sign of unfulfilled intercession. When you speak evil of a person, it's a, you're interceding against God's children. So you, we don't realize, wow. But then we have to start realizing, I've got to get in. I've got to get close. I've got to get in. And the flicker starts happening, and the prayer starts happening, the humility starts coming. We go, gosh... I mean, I, I love when I get humbled. I don't like it when it's initiated because it's always really embarrassing to myself to discover I'm not the man I thought I was. But once I'm in it, I'm just going, dear God, man, it's like taking off things I wasn't meant to wear, taking off burdens I wasn't meant to carry, taking responsibilities I wasn't supposed to. And now I have a simple conversation with God. It says, God... I'm, I'm good for you to do anything through me, but don't expect me to do anything of it. If I get involved, we know what happens. Steve happens. Steve. Same Steve that you found 44 years, 45 years ago. Same Steve. He's just, boom, there he is. But I'm not, neither am I having conditions on you that I need certain things to happen anymore because I don't need anything more to happen. You are everything. You are my satisfaction. You are my joy, my delight. You are my victory, health, healing, everything. So the freedom is go through me, however that means, whatever that means. And if you want me to be here in this posture, then I'll be in that posture. If you want me to be here in that posture, I'll be in that posture. I'm not mad at anybody. I don't, I'm not frustrated with anybody. I'm not really care. It's, it's a beautiful liberation. All through humiliation. Humiliation brings grace. More humility, more grace. More grace. Why would God, Jesus, come to me in a dream and say, shout grace to President Trump? Because that's, that's the answer of humility. Grace. Because grace is salvation. Grace is the means to release salvation. So, so here we are. The plumb line. The, 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 the seven rejoice to see. That's always speaking of the Holy Spirit. The, the plumb line in the hand is Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord which scan to and fro. He doesn't need but one man. What if you are that one man? You got to get off that fence. Oh, that was pretty good. I meant to say you got to get rid of the offense, but I said get off the fence. It's kind of the same thing because it paralyzes. It just locks us up. I just, well, I don't really care what you think. Well, I don't care what you think. That's what we get. We all just like opinions and opinions. When, when, when it happens is the, 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 
the, the, the Jesus, and we start weeping. We start weeping for the loss, and we start weeping for our state of ourself. The first group that's going to get saved is the church. We're the first to get saved. We're the first to be judged. We're the first to be saved. We're the first to be delivered. And even though all of us are established in the righteousness of God experientially or positionally, we can just shift so subtly to self. And I'm better than most people, and I ought to feel good about, you know, it's just really crazy. But all of a sudden, Zerubbabel, Joshua, Joshua's getting a change of clothes. He's starting to walk from the righteousness God has appointed him, not the one he's trying to hold to. Zerubbabel's being told, you're going to shout grace. This thing's coming through with grace. This, this whole nation of the United States of America is going to radically visited by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I prophesy that. It's going to, we are being radically visited by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And President Trump is a pinpoint because it's an authority place. And I see once you start touching the president and shouting grace to the president, you're shouting grace to as it was, they were shouting grace to Darius. We need Darius to rule rightly so that the prophecy of God's kingdom coming can be accomplished. Well, we need God to move in the heart of America because we are, if you notice, a democracy. Every heart has to start turning. And one heart at another, one heart at another. And, and so this grace starts flowing. He says, the plumb line's in the hand of Zubabal. The eyes are looking. They're going all over the whole world. Oh, Jesus. Can't you feel them? He's close. He's coming. He's coming. I'll close with this. Psalm 45, verse 1 through 7. Give you a vision of something. This has been going for three years. This has been growing. This is, the whole world's been changing unbeknownst to many. But now it has become something known to everybody. And so Psalm 45, verse 1. There's an authority of Jesus Christ stepping into the earth, taking possession of his kingdom and of nations and of inheritance and of possessions. Psalm 2 and Psalm 110. They're the bookends of, of all, the, all the prophecies of, that found in the book of Acts and found in uh, Hebrews. The kingdoms, I ask, I, I will declare the decree the Lord has said of me, you are a son today, I've begotten you. And the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till, my enemy, till I make your enemies your footstool. And then all that flows out of those. Now this Psalm 45. My heart is overflowing with a good theme. I recite my composition concerning the king. Not my king. The king. Because he's king whether he's mine or not. <laughs> my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. You are fairer than the sons of men. More humble, more generous, more kind, more loving, more forgiving. Unwilling that anyone should perish. You are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. The, the author of grace is the giver of grace, is the speaker of grace, and grace is poured. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your thigh, almighty one. In, with your glory and with your majesty. And in your majesty, you ride prosperously because of truth, humility, and righteousness. Humility. The king of glory rides in humility. And your right hand shall teach you awesome things. That, that, that just isn't correct. What it literally means, your right hand shall thrust the fear of God like an arrow into the, human, into the populace. The fear of God's coming back, guys. Best to find it in the closet. Best place to find the fear of God is in the closet. When we go... Whoa, yeah, okay, you're right. Mm -hmm. I came up short right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is an attitude you don't like. Hmm. Sorry. Ooh, yeah, wow. 
Boy, am I full of arrogance. Hmm, whoa, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. And you start un- being undone. Not on not un- the arrows. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. Now, may beloved see Jesus. This is not annihilate the earth. Get rid of everybody who doesn't believe like us. This is revival. This is awakening. This is slaying in the spirit. This is being taken out. Where you're just doing your own thing. And then one day the power of God comes. And the word of God breaks through. And all of a sudden you say to yourself. What must I do to be saved? And you're already saved. (laughs) Because all of a sudden you're being drawn into the holy presence. Into the glorious one. And all of a sudden you're falling down. We're falling down. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. That's Hebrews chapter 1. That's where that comes. That's quoted in Hebrews chapter 1. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. And he's on the move. He's writing prosperously in his majesty because of, in, in, because of the truth and humility and righteousness. I see, would, can we bring the worship? I just thought we'd sing that heal our land for a moment. I don't, like I said, I don't know how effective I am talking to you. Because I'm not, I love you. I love us all, man. I I just think God's actually really pleased with the the humility that we've walked in and continue to walk in. And I do believe grace is supposed to... Every one of us, we're called by God to have an inheritance in Christ to grow in the knowledge of him to the point where you understand your words change the world. That if he decrees something and you declare it, it will be done. You don't make up your decrees. They have to come from heaven or they're just gimmicks and mimics. But if God says something to you and then you become faithful with that word, holding it before the Lord, knowing you will be the first one convicted of the truth being decreed, declared, but it'll, you'll stay there. But just stay there. You planted it. You started the foundation. You, you started the whole thing. It's, we're going to finish it. Your hands are going to finish what you started. We're going to come alive. We're going to be set free. We're going to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. We're not letting anything stop us anymore even though it has stopped us, but we're now in a place of humility so we can allow the prophecies of Zechariah's and Haggai's to say, get going on, go forward, finish the course. You're called to be saved. You're called to be delivered. You're called to be filled with joy. We're, you go, what am I supposed to do? What? Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. That's the will of God in Christ Jesus for us. Love has failed, the wound prevails, and evil comes and tips the scales, and fear takes over, and it settles in our souls. If we believe that all is done, and that the battle can't be won, and we've forgotten Christ paid for all we'd sold, you said, if my people, you said, who were called by my name, you said, who could humble and pray and seek my face and change their ways. You were here from heaven. You were forgive our sins. You were yes, you said you were.
can feel the darkness Just let the Lord expose our hearts Lay our lives down, bow our knees, lift our hands There's no denying there's a lion Who's jealous for a bride that's shining Who shows her love by interceding for the land You said, if my people you said, who will call by my name You said, will get humble and pray And seek my face and change their ways You were, hear from heaven and You were, forgive our sins you Yes, you said you were If we would take a moment, each of us, and invite Jesus Christ. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will hear my voice and open, then I will come into him and sup with him, dine with him, and he with me. This is not a get saved verse. This is to the church verse. So it shows there's a constant opening of the door or refusing to open. And it voice activated. If you're hearing the voice of the Lord, will you open your heart to him right now? Will you agree with his words that he's speaking, that you're hearing? Declare the decree he's saying, reveal, believing that God raised him from the dead. For the only righteousness imputed is the faith that believes that God did that. And we cannot do it for ourselves. To confess him as Lord to the glory of God the Father, that you are Lord of my life, even if I don't know how to act in that way anymore. I just feel the Lord's coming right now. And if you just say to him, I'm hearing your voice. I want, it. I want you to come into my house. I want you to come into my home, my heart. I want you to heal my land. I want you to heal me. Heal me. Bring my forgiveness forefront. Bring my deliverance forefront. Bring salvation to me forefront. Allow, uh, pour out your spirit upon me in your way. Show me my heart, God. Show me my heart, God. You use your mouth. You have to use your mouth. Say, I, I want you in. Come on in, Jesus. I confess you. You're my Lord. You're everything, Jesus. Come. Come. Come, Lord. Come. Come. Oh, God, I want grace. A fresh a wave of grace. When you're done praying and you know you've made a, a transaction with Jesus Christ, You've acknowledged his lordship back in your life and you've opened the door for him to come in. You don't know what it means. You may not even feel anything or you may start to understand something's really happening because Jesus is coming and you're not sure that's what that's going to look like. But the transaction's been made. You put your hand to the door, you open the door and you say, come in. When you're done with that, stand up for me so I can know where we are in the next portion of our, how far we can go. Whoa! Heal my land. Heal my heart. Kaba. Kaba. Oh, oh, he's taking us up on the offer. We never could save ourselves. We could never stay saved without him. We're only saved with him, in him. He's so ready to do so much. Here he comes. Now the Holy Spirit's coming, the seven spirits of God. The strength to move mountains that are in for us and the ability to bring righteousness and new mindsets 
new robes of righteousness, walking in the ways. You can receive, receive the Holy Spirit. Just tell them, Holy Spirit, fill me again. I want to be full, full. Speak other tongues, prophesy. I want to see visions and have dreams. Come, Holy Spirit, as you prophesied in Joel 2. Come, come, bring the harvest. Unlock the harvest. Begin in our homes, our families, our jobs, our church. Unlock the harvest. Jesus, Holy Spirit. is extended as far as it's received can I go beyond where it's not been received it cannot go beyond as peace is received peace is given as grace is received grace is given just take a moment we're going to nation's prayer but I really believe that the whole summation of our gospel is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and God wants to bring grace to every one of us right now take the burdens off the work off the labor off the law off criticalness off you just grace grace yes. receive the grace and if you're you're receiving grace extend grace to your family right now release your children release your spouse your husband release your neighbors forgiveness is the power of grace salvation is the power of grace healing is the power of grace deliverance is the power of grace release release grace Keeps going. Oh, you said if my people, you said who are called by my name, you said who could humble and pray and seek my face and change their ways, you would hear from heaven, you would forgive our sins. Yes, you said you were. Now each man, each woman, hearing God's voice can declare grace to the thing in front of them that's supposed to be finished and completed and brought forth. It's the decree the Lord's speaking to each of us. The answer to all decrees is grace. The answer to all completion is grace. The answer to everything that's facing the earth today is grace. But it doesn't have to look the same for everybody. So without asking you to pray or declare grace over something that you're not being decreed to declare grace over, but wherever we are being declared, to, wherever we are being de decreed to declare grace, we're going to say grace. You ready? The word shout is a strong word. It's a loud word. It's a, it's a forceful word. It's saying the kingdom of God and his rule, his reign, his forgiveness, his healing, his deliverance, his resources, his help, his right, right attitude, the king of glory come in. That's the shout of grace. The shout of grace. So on the count of three, one, two, three.
<laughs> now, Will, we go out into our world and we just keep declaring the decree the Lord has said to me. And let that decree just become a declaration that has power, power, and authority. Meanwhile, we send our faith to Mer Melanie and Larry as they're about to launch nations. There's so much ahead of us in the global call for nations. But we bless you too for holding your place so powerfully and leading our online audience as well as those of us. We're here. We declare the nations are the inheritance of Jesus Christ. And he is, it is the reward for his suffering. And the ends of the earth are his possession. And so we declare blessing to this intercession for the nations and calling each and every one to the Lord, to him, so they would move from being incest against him in revolt and rebellion to come back into submission, to kiss the son, to let us he be angry. And there begins to be submission in the nations, in the kings, in the rulers, in the judges, in the peoples. And the rage re result goes away and healing comes to the nations. Healing comes to the nations. Bless you too for carrying that burden, that vision and holding it. So we release everybody. Go out in your day. Enjoy your day. Shout grace as you're decreed. And let God have his way for everyone. Salvation has come to this house.